Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to The Fragrant Bunker. Today we have an interesting topic, kind of a love-hate relationship with this one, but uh, it's uh, my top five most obnoxious perfumes. <laughs> so the background is made a little bit obnoxious. Could you imagine having to live in a space like this? I mean, we love a little bit of purple, a little bit of blue, teal vibes, but imagine like living in this background all the time. Um, so I'm this kind of obnoxiousness, I'm trying to deliver that. And uh, boy, okay, I have a list of perfumes that I want to share with you guys uh, that go in that direction. Top five obnoxious perfumes. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today. Gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon. Super Deco Ball spelled together there as well for extra perks. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream several times a week on my main Super Deco channel. Go check me out there and join the live chats. Hi to my chat. Let's see if anybody in the chat guesses any one of them. Oh, Aish guessed one. And my number one, Aish uh, in the chat said, uh, Sauvage. Yes, but it's the elixir. <laughs> this one is obnoxious. Now, Hold your horses before you watch this video and you say, how dare you? I love this perfume. I love it too. I have a bottle. I also have a backup because I knew they were going to reformulate it and blah, blah, blah. So when it first came out, I bought several. Now, listen to me though. We're going to go through a list of obnoxious perfumes for better or for worse. Some of these perfumes on this list I do not own and do not wish to own because they are the bad obnoxious. And then there's this obnoxious, which can be terrible if you don't know how to dose it. And most people that I've encountered have no freaking clue how to dose it. Sauvage, all of the concentrations in general, but in particular, the elixir, which is particularly heavy, particularly obnoxious, and it can really suffocate you if you don't know how to wear this. This is literally just behind the knee, one spritz, delicate, half a spritz, not a full, half a spritz behind one knee, and that's it. If you really want both knees, then do less than half a spritz one knee, less than half a spritz the other knee. And then it's far away from the nose and it kind of climbs on you and it gets to your nose and then it smells okay. <laughs> but around the neck, chest, like what people love to do, obnoxious, literally. This one has to, this, this one needs to be dosed sparingly if you want to have any any sort of pleasure with it otherwise this is just obnoxious obnoxious so barbara says this is alchemy <laughs> Oof. tina says you can smoke someone out let me tell you and aisha also says baccarat rouge uh, listen i did not put back i i baccarat rouge is a perfume I cannot stand because everybody and their mother think that they're sophisticated when they wear it. Like the perfume itself for me is maybe not obnoxious. It's the people wearing it that are, sorry. It's because again, they overspray it, they overdo it and they love to conform. They love the fact that everybody else is wearing it and they want to wear it too. And they think it smells different on them. No, honey, you do not wear Baccarat Rouge. Baccarat Rouge wears you because most of you out there don't know how to use it. Sorry. Said it, so shoot me. All right, do not do it. <laughs> Everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's alleged and just my opinion. So Baccarat Rouge is more about the issues of the people wearing it than the perfume itself. So it's not on this list, but it was a very close call. The second one on my list... Let me blend it in. This one, I will, I, I, I cannot. This one is really obnoxious and I do not own it. And now you see also one of the reasons why this background is this color. <laughs> and interestingly, this color is gonna come into play as well uh, for the two most obnoxious perfumes ever for me, Alien by Mugler. Ugh. I, I, I cannot. Okay, so Alien has Jasmine Sambac, and you could say, well, whatever, a lot of perfumes have Jasmine Sambac. And yeah, 
And then it has the cashmere wood, white amber accord, and it kind of goes into that territory of kind of like an alien jasmine, synthetic, heavy, obnoxious. And the biggest issue that I have with this perfume, again, is the people wearing it. I have unfortunately dealt with some of the worst people in my life who loved to wear this perfume. And so I have encountered some lovely people as well who wear Alien, don't get me wrong. I've encountered some wonderful people, actually, who wear Alien by Thierry Mugler. But the mean people, the nasty people that I have met that wear Alien, they were by far the worst people I've ever met. Like, vile. Vile. And then on top of that, you add this perfume, which is so over-the-top intoxicating, and then you overspray it. It, it, it makes me want to gag. I, I really, really do not like it. it. It's obnoxious on every level. On, it, on the way it's formulated in its own right, it's obnoxious. And some of the worst people that I know wear it. It so makes it even more obnoxious. So I don't even own a bottle of Alien and I don't want to. Like, no. Just no. That one. So that's my number two. Now, uh, let me go back in the, in the Senna. Um, cause I'm going to show you the next one later. So now the next one I own, and this one is obnoxious, uh, again, for the good reasons. Okay. So it's unfortunately been discontinued and it smells very indolic, usually on male chemistry. Uh, it's a very, it's a very heavy, heavy floral, uh, but it's so beautiful. It's from the thirties, you guys. Uh, and, uh, it's. Joy by Jean Patou. Now, this jasmine in here is so indolic, poopy, barnacle smelling. It's obnoxious. In the best of ways, though. Now, let me hear me out here. Um, on some skins, really, some people only smell out clean jasmine. Yasminum grandiflorum. Not Sambac Jasmine that we had in Alien. This is the Yasminum Grandiflorum. Different uh, Jasmine. Uh, and they smell the most beautiful Jasmine oil in this one. It's an overdose of Jasmine, right? But then, to some noses, some people sniff out the indolic aspect of the Jasmine. If you sniff out the indolic aspect of the Jasmine... It is pissy poopy, barnacly, dried up fish from the ocean. I mean, we're talking obnoxious, but it's a type of stank in perfume form that I appreciate. Not in real life. Like, I, I, I don't want to smell drying fish under the sun. I don't like to smell barnacles, okay? <laughs> don't like to, to smell poopy stuff. Uh, so this is a floral indole and uh, it is obnoxious, but on some skins, you don't get the obnoxious note at all. It stays floral without going into the indoles. On my skin, it goes into the indoles. I, I smell the indoles a lot, so it's quite obnoxious, but I respect this perfume so much. Uh, I love it. I love the history behind it, the context from which it stems, and uh, Jean Patou's vision to really create something like this. So this is one of those re-editions um, re of the vintage bottle released shortly before its discontinuation. But you see what I mean? This list is obnoxious for the right and, you know, in a good way and in a bad way. This one, this one for me in a good way. <laughs> hmm. Uh, that was number three. Number four, I also do not own. It's just vile. And it's going to go into this color scheme. You might have guessed it. Let me blend it in. I might have to go through both pitches uh, to get to the second one. No, I can do it. Okay. Here you go, guys. This is my number four. Again, Thierry Mugler. Angel. Listen. 
Calabrian bergamot, praline, patchouli, bomb, also obnoxious to the high heavens, angel for a reason, and same as alien, you guys. So you can see how this, this color scheme is right there. My little top obnoxious perfumes. This is all apartment is Thierry Mugler. <laughs> Angel and alien. I love Thierry Mugler. Don't get me wrong. I love Womanity. Womanity. I love the Cologne by Thierry Mugler. I love Amen. Okay. Really do. And I love his fashion. Don't get me wrong. But Angel and Alien. Okay. So Angel, again, some of the most vile people that I've met wore this perfume. It just... It's... Synthetic in, in the worst way possible for me. I really, really do not like it. And it's just too much. Tina is like, oh my God, you don't own the original? No. I do not want it. I don't want to go anywhere near it. Oof. The perfume. No. Uh, Heaven says in the, in the chats, the original? Nope. I gave it to my mother. Girl, she was perfect for it. Oh, there you go. You had some issues with your mom, huh? Well, you see? Uh-huh. Angel. Teddy Mugler. I, I, I cannot. When I smell it on people, I run. I run. I run away from them. Um, so Patricia says, so it's the association for you for some of these perfumes. N no. If it were only the association, like it is for Baccarat Rouge, then they would not come onto my list. That's why Baccarat Rouge is not on my list. Because it would be just the association. This one on its own, plus on its own, I, I cannot stand it. I don't like these notes. I don't like how synthetic it smells. It's just, I don't like it. It's chemical to the highest degree for me in a bad way. Obnoxiously chemical. And then on top of that, the association with other people that are really, really, like some really nasty people that were in my life wore this. So the two things combined allow this one to enter this stratosphere of the top five most obnoxious perfumes. But like I said, not all of the perfumes on this list are obnoxious in, the, in a bad way. Like I said, we already had Sauvage Elixir and we've already had Joy by Jean Patou, which are obnoxious in a, in a good way, you see? There's always duality in this world, you guys. Nothing is just black and white. Um, so, oof. we'll go, we'll go. You I can't. Now, next one. My my fifth one, actually. Uh and um and and here I do own a bottle. Th I've I've left this one as as the last one because I just this I don't think there's a more obnoxious perfume today. And I'm not talking about conceptual perfumes that are niche. You know, I didn't wanna choose for this selection perfumes that were made to purposefully be stinky and obnoxious. Like some, you know, like I respect that. Like if a perfume is made by some niche house and, and like, you know, some niche houses, I remember who, who was it that just made a perfume called like sweat, human sweat, or, you know, all that stuff. Or, you know, Comme des Garçons has that uh, tape, cardboard box and tape smell. I also own that bottle. Those are not obnoxious. I mean, those are smells that you wouldn't wear every day because they're very conceptual fragrances, but that's not obnoxious. For me, the obnoxious ones are the mass release perfumes that are not aiming to be stinky from the get-go. They, they want to have mass appeal and the masses do love them, but they are obnoxious. Those are the ones that I classify obnoxious, not the limited edition niche only 100 bottles made and the concept is smells of garage again come to some blah 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 no we're talking mass releases that are obnoxious and the one that takes the cake for me and here i've never smelt it on anybody else really i don't think anybody dares wear this really and i have the first formulation of it i have the first edition I, th I think they toned it down a little bit after the first one came out. But y'all, here's another Dior for you. And uh, Demachy is the culprit. I blame Francois Demachy for hypnotic poison, eau de parfum. Okay. 
you guys do not confuse this with the eau de toilette. They are completely different. I mean, they are different worlds. They are worlds apart, okay? Um, that's a little bit fingerprint magnet here. I'm trying to polish the finger. Uh, they are worlds apart. The eau de toilette is amazing. I adore my bitter almond vanilla hypnotic poison eau de toilette. But the eau de parfum, and this is the first edition, it still has its little tiny wax imitating that wax little seal with the CD on it, the old school CD. You see, they don't they, they don't have this little ribbon anymore around the bottle for the current. So this is one of the ways you can also see which is the older batch. Um, I, you know what, I, even lifting the lid, I, I read, you could check out my review of this one. I define this like the blood perfume, uh, the blood vampire perfume. Even taking the, the stopper off. <laughs> like, I love it. I really love it, but I hate it. And I never use that word. Like, loathe. I use the word loathe. But this thing, it's vile. Uh... It's cherry. This is cherry syrup. Cherry cough syrup with almonds. Cloying, sticky cough syrup cherry overdose with a bit of almonds and vanilla. And it's it's it penetrates you. The first time I bought it, um, I was traveling. I don't know what I was thinking. And uh, I had it. Oh, my God. I see it from the, the spray nozzle. There's a bit of perfume that dried out. It, like, turned black. <laughs> like, I don't know if you can see, but on the spray nozzle, it look how brown black it, like, turns when it dry. And, um, and so I sprayed it on that day. I was traveling. It was in my hotel room. Took a shower later, many hours later, blah, blah, blah. So I put the stopper back on, but I didn't click it on. It was just leaned on like this. With a little bit of a, see? That was enough for me to wake up in the middle of the night. So this was on the bedside table. This little booger woke me up. That's how obnoxious it was. Coming from underneath the lid. Girl. And I adore the fact that this thing is so unapologetically obnoxious. I respect it. I really respect it. But I've had it so many years and you can see how very little... I mean, you, you cannot see almost... There's almost no dent in the perfume. I mean, it's been like, what? What do I have it now? Almost 10 years now? And it's like basically full okay and once a year i would dare right around halloween you know because it's very vampire very dry very blood it's like ch cough syrup cherry after you coughed up blood you know so it's it's really i mean this thing is deep obnoxious but I've never smelled anybody else wear it out and about. Yes, I smell people wear the eau de toilette a lot. And I love the eau de toilette. But the eau de parfum, I don't think people dare. <laughs> this is not... Uh, Tina says it's a huge bottle. No, it's 100 mil. It's not that big. 100 mil. The eau de toilette of Hypnotic Poison goes up to 150 mil. And I do own the 150 mil bottle. I adore Hypnotic Poison, EDT. Uh, but the... Um, the Eau de Parfum, they only made 50 ml and 100 ml. I don't know currently what size they make. Uh, this is that vampire blood cherry cough syrup. Bitter almond vanilla perfume. Obnoxious. And when I spray it on me, you can't wash it off. I mean, it, it just sticks for hours and hours and it keeps punging at you. Ah. Oh. Really, this one it takes the cake for me, the mother load of obnoxious. This one wins, hands down. So there you go. 
that was my list. Uh, I can also tell you what the other two perfumes that made it very close, but didn't make it in the top five. Since you've been here all these minutes, might as well give you a little Easter egg moment. The other two that almost made it into the list, but didn't, they're both Sheepras. And I didn't want to throw too much shade at Sheepras, you know what I mean? But they, are, they can be quite obnoxious. One of them was Halston. Uh, Halston uh, can be quite obnoxious, <laughs> Sheepra. And the other one, of course, the Queen of Sheepras. Aromatics Elixir, baby. This one came in very, very close. Very close. Not in the top five, but these two made... These two were runner-ups. They were runner-ups. They almost made the cut. They almost made the cut. Um... But I do love them both. I, I love Elixir more, more than Halston, but uh, uh, I do love them, but, uh, but they are obnoxious. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're obnoxious in the best of ways, okay? In the best of ways. But they didn't make the final cut. Aish says, oh, poor Aromatics Elixir. Heaven says, I hate both of those. <laughs> Heaven says, but my mom loved them. <laughs> Aisha says they are strong AF. Yeah, I mean, the current version of Halston is a little bit watered down, obviously. But Aromatics is still kicks a punch, even though it's been reformulated. So there you have it, guys. Those were my top five plus two bonuses. Uh, most obnoxious perfumes. Uh, let me know what yours are. What would be your... For better or for worse, maybe you can choose two, you know, and let me know down below. Like the obnoxious that you love type of obnoxious... For me, it's joy. And then the obnoxious that you hate type of obnoxious. Like for me, alien and angel. Uh, amen. Uh, angel. Angel. Alien and angel. So like the good obnoxious and the bad obnoxious. So let me know down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Subscribe. Thumb it up. And until next time, never forget to never give up on fragrant love. Love you loads. Bye.